Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Minute. My name is Garden Sound, and this is the show where I try to explain a musical concept in about a minute. So the other day I was listening to NPR. Uh, it was a little bit late, and they were doing the classical music rotation, and uh, I heard this piece where the melody was just really being challenged in terms of how long it is. And it was just, you know, long and long, long. The melody just kept going and going. And at first it was so long I thought it was Sibelius because he's pretty well known for doing that. Uh, I'll put a link down below to some of his material. And uh, But it wasn't Sibelius, it was Bruckner. And I really enjoyed the piece. It was Bruckner's Eighth Symphony, and I'll link that down below too. Long story short, uh, it got me thinking about how sometimes the melody doesn't fit into the bar line. And I wanted to pass that information on to you guys and say that you don't have to fit your melody inside the bar line, and so don't worry if you're, the idea you have in your head doesn't fit nicely within a 4-4 package, um, because uh, you can extend that melody way far beyond the bar line. I mean, think about a jazz solo, or think about you know any sort of um, count, contrapuntal piece where the, where the, like the other day, my counterpoint piece, the top voice, if you go back and watch it, definitely extended beyond the bar line um, in terms of how long that phrase was, how long that melodic packet was. Um, so... Yeah, it's called hypermeter. That's the that's the technique. The technique is called hypermeter. It's when a melody or a, or a harmony or a phrase extends beyond the bar line, sort of ignores the bar line. You go hypermetric. You're hyper over past the meter bar line. Hypermeter. There you go. All right, everybody. That's it for me today. My name is Garden Sound. I'll see you tomorrow.